What's going on YouTube? Um, I know I've been missing around on YouTube for a long time. Uh, I haven't posted something for a long, long time now. And I have a corporate for it. Uh, it's because I recently changed my job and uh, I started doing new things. But mostly it's because uh, winter hit in southern Utah. Um, it's pretty cold, so that's why I didn't want to do anything really on my car. But mostly is because I didn't have any parts to work with. So now I actually bought pretty good parts. I'm still missing two more things, but I'm gonna walk you guys through what I bought and what we're gonna do next. So first, what we're gonna do, we will start over here. So, and this guy, you guys probably, you guys already know my car. You guys have been watching my YouTube channel. So this right here is 62, 66. She started spitting a little bit of oil. is because we pushed her way beyond um, she's supposed to work uh, about 30 psi now she started putting some oil out of course I can rebuild it and keep going with it but as you guys know watch my youtube channel you guys know my goal I want to go between 1100 to 1200 horsepower and that turbo ain't gonna do it so what I did I went and order custom so what do you do? You call Precision or you can call Roosted Performance in my case. I called them up, I told them what I want to do. So they built me um, from Precision themselves 7270 ball bearing billet turbo. This thing is actually really light. Uh, I was really really surprised because how light it is from my previous one. Um, and this one they said should be spooling between 200 300 rpms faster which that'll be surprising if i install it and it's gonna spool that fast and they said this should be good enough uh 1100 plus to 1200 horsepower um so hopefully this will do what i want to do but the next thing i want to do is you guys still know is i need to get a transmission a new clutch and uh the 3.4 stroker motor that i want to get so um They'll be coming up pretty soon. We're in December now, so I should be having all of those by end of February. Uh, beginning of March, I should be able to take everything apart when it kind of gets a little bit warmer, as you guys know. But we'll get more parts. So what else I also have with that one, I'm actually changing my exhaust system as well. So right here on these four boxes, I got four inch exhaust pipes, stainless steel all the way back. I'm gonna make my own exhaust. As you guys know, I make my own stuff. I don't like buying anything. Um, new V-bands, um, don't mind that. So pretty much I got all the good stuff to get it going. Um, only a couple things left. Like I said, it's just a transmission. Turbo blanket, all of them are here. And this time, this time I changed it. I wanna go with the carbon, like a carbon mix with stainless wires, um, turbo blanket. And they said it should help with the heat a little bit better and it shouldn't deteriorate anytime soon. Usually when the heat's turbos create so much heat it starts deteriorating for a little bit. But so yeah, so she's been stored for a little bit. I drove it a couple times when the sun was getting better, as you guys see. Snow sucks. But uh so far for winter time I've been driving this guy. If you guys haven't seen it, this is my Kia Stinger GTS. We only got two in Utah so far. But let me know. Um, let me know if you guys want to see anything on this car too. I mean, I like this car a lot. It's uh, it's really nice. It's all-wheel drive, so it helps me go around in Utah, especially with this snow that we're having. Um, it already has a JB4 tune. Um, it has E85. Um, also have uh, intake, spark plugs, a um, bunch of other stuff. I think I bought a lip for it too. It's a carbon fiber lip. I don't really like to buy stuff. I like to make my own stuff, to be honest. But in this case, I don't just want to give it a try. I don't have like bolt-ons in my cars a lot. Um, but I'm going to give it a try to see how they actually fit. I mean, I never had a good luck with bolt-ons, to be honest. But uh, I'll give it a try. 
So if you guys want to see anything on the Stinger, let me know. We still have a couple months of winter, so we can try something crazy. If you guys want to see like snow drifts and stuff like that, I'm totally on it because I like to do that a lot. But uh, pretty soon we'll be. Uh, I'm thinking about installing installing the turbo on this thing to get it to see what modifications I have to do. Maybe I'm not really really on it yet, but maybe I can move this guy right here. That's the fuse box. Move it where the battery is and move the battery to the trunk. I know I don't want to move the battery to the trunk is because I have to do all the wiring and stuff to the front now. But if I needed to, I can because that other turbo is a lot bigger. I do have a lot of good space in here, like especially um, from a Supra chassis to a Subaru chassis because this is made by Subaru. I hate Subaru, but it made by Subaru. Um, it has a really wide motors on the Subaru, so they have to make the chassis a lot wider. So that's why I have a lot more space than the top end. So I can do stuff like this, like bigger turbos and stuff like that with no problems. But um, maybe I'll do that. I don't know how much space I'm going to have. Maybe I'll just modify the piping just a little bit just to get it going. Um, but in here, hopefully that exhaust manifold, I'm going to take a, I'm going to take it out, take a look at it to see if there's any cracks or uh, if it's warped or anything like that. It's still in steel. Hopefully it ain't. But... If it is, then uh, I'll make another one to fit with the new turbo. And then I'll probably change the wastegate as well because that's been sitting there for a long time. Just, you know, just start fresh. If you're putting in new stuff, just start fresh. So that way um, you're not going back and like, hey, maybe this one's already failing or something like that. So you just start fresh, go with it and see what happens. Um, that's what I do. I always like to start fresh. I don't like to put new stuff into old stuff and then it's just it doesn't work that way usually and then um you have either limits or you can't achieve your goals for some reason is it because something is uh limiting you from going out there but um uh one thing i'm not giving out is ac i'm not giving out on ac man um this car is going to be mostly summer and cruise after i built the whole thing um as you guys know i'm building this to be a daily a race car or whatever i want to do if i want to take it to the track i want to take it to the track so it's just not it's not gonna be just like a weekend drive i want to enjoy my car every single day including cold not snowy weather of course uh, i won't be able to drive in snow but um like colder weather hotter weather i want to be able to jump in it be comfortable and do whatever i want to do so that's exactly why i'm building this car that's why i'm putting so much effort into this car you know what i mean so uh um so stay tuned with me guys i mean it's gonna be a lot of great things coming up to this car and a lot of good information is gonna be out there um i'm pretty sure there's a lot of um youtube videos on how to 2jz swap your car but if you guys stick around and watch my videos i'm actually gonna pull the transmission and engine out of this car and i'm gonna show you guys what i did with the chassis um how i made this car uh this car with this engine how i made it, this engine to fit in this car the way it is now the way it's not vibrating the way it's sitting the way it's not interfering with my handling anything like that i'm gonna show you every single detail that most of the youtubers don't show you guys so but i'm going to show you guys so because i want to see more of these two jz swapped frs's out there in my opinion i don't really like the new supras because it's not really a toyota anymore it's a bmw i mean if i want to buy a bmw i'll go buy a bmw you know what I mean? I don't need another badge on a BMW, to be honest. So I feel like this this what the new Supra should be, uh, be like with the 2JZ or maybe a 3JZ. You never know, all aluminum. Um, uh, they do like a billet blocks, aluminum billet blocks on these 2JZs. They do have a wet block and a dry block. But that's like 30 grand just the block itself. So I'm pretty sure not a lot of people will like to spend that much money. Because these OEM cast blocks are pretty strong with the power levels we're looking for, guys. But, so yeah, stick around, guys. I'm going to show every single detail what I did and how you can swap your 2JZ into your FRS the way, the right way, okay? So you can still have the heater, AC, whatever, all the functions and everything that you need. So don't miss out. Uh, but the only free information I can give you guys is to hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up because that's the only thing that's free. It's not costing you guys anything. Plus it's helping me out, giving me a motivation of uh, keep going and 
make you guys more videos and show you guys more stuff. So uh, like I said, stick around and hopefully we'll get this car what I want it to be. And hopefully some of you guys will come meet me because uh, there's going to be a couple of good racing going on. Uh, elite tuners and stuff like that, like car shows and stuff like that. Hopefully you guys will see my videos and come around and meet me. And I'm really happy to meet my new fans and stuff like that. So stick around, guys. All right. Uh, this is it for me for now. And I'll see you guys pretty soon. Peace.